the impact of NATO's activities on the people. They claim that they are responsible for a humanitarian intervention, but they are creating a, huma a humanitarian crisis. Two of his grandchildren and their mother are among the dead. Oh, no, you're killing our children! You are a hypocrite! Next to Mr. Alpha Weldy was his son Khaled, mourning a pregnant wife, a three-year-old son, and a six-year-old daughter. This is our army! This is my, my soul, my kid! This is not an army! This is a kid! This morning, NATO admits that an air raid on Libya's capital, Tripoli, killed civilians on Sunday. The power of the explosion blew a double-story dwelling to a heap of concrete, chunks of rubble, and twisted reinforcing bars. It appears that one weapon did not strike the intended target due to a weapons systems failure. A frantic rescue operation pulled out no survivors. Nine people died in the blast and 18 were injured. Until the United States reduces its military spending to support our economics and moral aggressions around the world, we will be a menace to life on the planet. When Eisenhower was going out, Eisenhower was warning the American people and the establishment, be, uh, beware of the military industrial complex. And what he was saying, that we will move to war in order to feed that monster. So America now engaged in three wars, spending billions of dollars. This is an imperialist war. They know that Libya has the largest oil reserves in all of Africa, the ninth largest oil reserves in the world. If no, no new oil fields were discovered in Libya, and many will be discovered, but if no new oil fields were discovered, at the current rate of production, Libya has enough oil to produce at this level for the next 63 years. That's a prize that ExxonMobil Chevron, ConocoPhillips, any in Italy, and the others want. They didn't start to carry out regime change in late February or March. In April 1986, they carried out the attempted assassination of Gaddafi with U.S. Air Force planes. They bombed his house then. He wasn't about to, quote, massacre a group in Benghazi. They've been trying to carry out regime change in Libya since the 1969 revolution when Libya stood up and said, Libya belongs to Libya. They've come out here with their green flag to show defiance, to show their support for Muammar Gaddafi and his regime. And they swell to the front in great numbers to hear an audio message from Brother Leader. This is the first time they are facing an armed nation of a millions. They will be defeated. The alliance will be defeated. After more than 4,000 strike sorties on Libya, NATO doesn't seem to be getting anywhere. They say it's not just about military might, it's about political will. But if you see these scenes, if you listen to the sounds, and you test the will of the people here, there's really a sense that this crisis in Libya isn't ending anytime soon. The common consensus among the demonstrators out here today is that the U.S. and NATO intervention in Libya is illegal. So I'm here in today's protest. One because my interest as a New York City public school teacher lies in the money that is being misspent or um, wasted in killing innocent people in other countries. This is another um, war starting for U.S. interests that have nothing to do with the people here in the United States. Libya is for Libyans to decide what to do with their country. They marched on the United States Embassy in the South African capital, Pretoria, chanting hands off Libya, hands off Gaddafi, and hands off the Libyan people. The main reason why I'm here today is to uh, protest against the bombs in Libya. Being an African American, I think that anything that happens to our brothers and sisters in Africa also happens to me. So when you're bombing Libya, you're bombing me too. But the big demonstration will culminate, as Viola said, right here in Harlem, August 13th. And that's a demonstration which we can make to be a historic event.